And monster game from Chris Stapps Porzingis. Celtics get the win 133 to 129. Win number 40 on the season. It's Celtics post game live. Tom Giles in for Amina Smith. Uh, Eddie, we, we talked about it at halftime, you know, trying to get some stops and transition there. The third quarter seemed like everything kind of turned around. What did you see in the second half that, that gave the Celtics the ability to uh, show that they just are the better team? It, it was just that. I thought they, they made a conscious effort. Uh, coming out of halftime to make sure that they weren't getting beat in transition, whether it be if they turn it over, they make sure they got back on defense. If they made it, uh, took a long three and missed it, they made sure they got back on defense. They matched up and their communication was on point. Um, I also thought that they took advantage of the lack of defense that the Washington Wizards present. You know, there's really no rim protection back there. I think if you move the ball side to side in that third quarter, I thought it w highlighted exactly what, Boston Celtics basketball is all about moving the basketball, getting a good shot, passing up a good shot to get a great shot, and then also pounding the paint. I thought we made a uh, we were focused on actually taking advantage of the fact that there was no rim protectors, and we did have a big out down there that we could go to. And Porzingis was the recipient of it, getting 14 free throws. That just shows you you don't get 14 free throws unless you're aggressive or unless you're going at somebody that that's around the basket. And they made uh, they continuously kept feeding, uh, force feeding uh, Porzingis. Um, and, and, you know, we were able to get some separation there. I don't know about that end of that fourth quarter, though. I don't know about it. Not sure about how we wanted to finish that. But at the end of the day, walked away with a win, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean, the, I think they're up by 13 late, and Washington got it down to, to four in the end. Uh, but you mentioned the paint there, Celtics 62 points in the paint. And as you said, Kristaps Porzingis had uh, a big bulk of that with the 34 points. He's standing by with Abby. Christophs, tell me about the third quarter. You guys gave up 71 points in the first half, held them to just 16. What changed? Uh, to be honest, I, did, I didn't think it was all that bad in the first half. They did have some non-shooters make some open shots, which we gave them. Uh, but second half, we knew. We have to take away their transition. That's what they're trying to do. Run fast, shoot crazy shots, and make them. And uh, second half, we turned up our, our intensity and, and held them to 16. For you, just your second 30-point double-double of your career, hit a career high, 14 free throws. Did you feel like you had a mismatch, I mean, every time down the floor? Yes. Yes, I did, and I wanted to make them pay, right? They just traded away their five men also, and they're, they're, they, they don't really have a big man, so... Those are the type of games that Joe, Brad, and the front office brought me here for, right? To to um, to punish those mismatches and, and create some advantage for us, and and uh, and that's what I did tonight. Speaking of, how fun was this game for you, playing against your former team inside TD Garden? I saw you smiling. I mean, from that jump ball with Denny, <laughs> you're laughing throughout. Of course, of course, of course. All the talk already pregame and kind of as soon as the game starting, you know, you got, you talk a little bit back and forth with with your ex teammates and. And they know your game, you know their game. So uh, it's always fun to play against uh, against former teammates. And uh, and today was no different. Close out the home stand at 5-2. and two. Are you happy with that? Uh, could have been better, to be honest. Could have been better. But, um, but we're getting wins. We're getting wins. And we won a tough game against Atlanta. We won a tough game against these guys that played very hard. Credit to their new head coach that's making them play a little bit different. And, uh, and those are those are tough games. And, and most important that we come out with a win. Christoph, thank you. Congrats. Thank you very much. Thank you. I love I love the honesty. I love the honesty in these answers here. You know, Abby asked him about the home stand five and two. Thought it should have been better. And then asking, hey, was there a mismatch there, Scal? Yes. Yes, there was a mismatch. Uh, yeah. Very, very much so. You know, the, the big thing about this is there's teams out there that are going to switch, teams that are going to go small. And you can punish teams different ways when they go small, but, you know, historically, we did not have a weapon like that. Now, any team in the playoffs that matches up with us or they switch to Jason Tatum and we go inside to Porzingis throughout the playoffs, it's going to be hard for t people to switch us, which opens up the floor for all kinds of different reasons. So Porzingis is a, a weapon. I like the fact that they are using that weapon at the rate that they did today. Betty, what, what did you like about Kristaps Porzingis and the way they really employed him? Well, I think that everybody, when when we got him and, and when he came into this league, everybody just spoke basically about how he could stretch the floor and hit threes, and nobody really gave him credit for it. And, and, I, and I was one of them that didn't really know how effective he can be down in the post because 
tough you get enamored with a guy that's his size is able to step behind a three-point line and knock down threes and be a threat in that way you kind of get comfortable like okay we take a big away from the basket how about we create a switch and get him on a smaller guy and we put him in the basket and we'll draw fouls or oh, hit being him being a willing passer he'll make the right play we got guys that can knock down shots and make other plays I like the way that we employed him all night tonight. I thought it was uh, very calculated. It was effective. And it started at the beginning of the game. You know, getting 14 free throws, like I said, you don't accidentally get 14 free throws. You get 14 free throws by being around the basket and being super aggressive. Yeah, he had 14 points in the third quarter alone. And that's, Scott, where I want to go next with, with this is, you know, this game at halftime, you saw the Wizards go on that crazy run right before the break. Meanwhile, the Celtics come out and just – really dominated that third quarter, which which has been a bit of an issue at times from the season. But what did you like about the way they came out of the locker room to win that third quarter 36 to 16? Yeah, so without being redundant about Porzingis, we've already discussed him. It was their pickup points. And pickup points mean not letting the Wizards come down. And Tyus Jones is good. Like, he runs a team. But he's good when he's comfortable. When we started picking guys up, you know, three-quarter court, pickup points at half court, just made everything hard for them. Like, even like a guard-to-guard -guard pass was tough for them. So that's what stood out to me. It was our defense. And then, obviously, Tatum and, and Porzingis were great offensively. But our defense made a big difference. Just two fast break points after giving up 26 fast break points in the first half. And I know Jason Tatum finished 3 of 10 from 3, but it seemed like there was also a concerted effort just for him to get to the basket. And the Celtics just in general to get to the basket there in that third. Well, I thought that was the uh, focus, uh, focal point of this team is, is you got to get into the paint. I mean, everybody was trying to get into the paint. There was no shot blocker. You can't name a shot blocker that the Wizards had out there. That's why they played so fast. They were able to get five guys out running the floor and put a lot of pressure on us in transition. But I want to ask you something, Scal, because, I mean, you sitting right there Go watching ahead. the game, right? So, and we, and we always, you know, at, at this point, we're talking about creating championship habits and things like that, right? And, and we expect the best. That's all we expect here uh, in Boston, you know, with the Celtics. So I want to know, let, let me ask you this. Did you feel like, you know, I thought the third quarter, the third quarter, end of the third quarter, I thought attention to detail was on point. Um, I thought everything was on point. But then right there with the in the fourth quarter, do you feel like they kind of let their foot off the gas? They, they kind of exhaled a little bit yeah. like once they – yeah, okay. So that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like that, those are the things that we got to clean up because I've, I've been a part of this game for a long time, man, and, and I've seen the craziest things happen. And the minute you exhale is the minute, you know, that Python squeeze, squeezes a little bit harder, you know what I mean? It gets a little tighter. But, you know, uh, let, let me know what you've seen out there as far as like, and, and is that something that, I, I believe that's something that needs to get checked. Our defensive intensity wavered all day today. In the third quarter, it was there. In the fourth quarter, hit 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 and miss, especially down the stretch. A lot of misses, a lot of like them doing whatever they want. Now they're a talented offensive team, but and then in the first half, we had some uh, pressure in the half court, but not in transition. So I just thought our defensive uh, intensity wavered. It's understandable, but I'm with you. Like if once you. A team goes up, you know, like early on and has a couple fast break points early on. You're supposed to be able to adjust your emphasis. I thought they did in the second half, in the third quarter. I thought they did at times in the fourth, but it wasn't there the entire night. You're right, Eddie.